Hello, um, this is Jing Rong and uh, this is Yong Ji. Um, today we are going to share our experience in building MRPC, which is to implement remote procedure call as a managed system service. So this work is a joint effort among the institutions listed here. Remote procedure call is a fundamental building block of distributed systems and microservices in modern data centers. RPC allows the developers to build a wide range of network applications using a simple and familiar programming model. And according to Google's report, RPC generates more than 95% of the application traffic in its production data center and spends around 10% of its data center CPU cycles uh, just executing the gRPC's library code. As a result, improving RPC performance has long been a major research topic. To use RPC, the programmer first specifies type of information for each remote procedure, and a compiler generates stub code linking to each application. And this is similar on the server side. This basic model has been proposed since 1980s and was proposed by the paper on RPC. And all existing RPC implementations belong to this category, which is to implement these routines in an application library that is linked with an application binary. Except there's a lot of problems in terms of manageability. The goal is to simplify a set of RPC manageability problems in real deployment, including several aspects. In terms of observability, for example, we want to learn how many RPCs there are and how long does each take. And in terms of policy enforcement, for example, as a network operator, uh, can I rate limit or prioritize certain RPCs? And in terms of up upgradability, for example, as a user of RPC libraries, can I upgrade my RPC library uh, and fix some vulnerabilities while my app is still running? And there are a lot of similar uh, other similar questions. And look, there are also a bunch of uh, startup, startup companies and open source projects that aim to solve the same related issues. And some of these needs, such as observability, can actually be realized by a feature-rich RPC library, for example, gRPC Proxless. However, some policies are mandatory rather than discretionary, such as access control and central QoS control. And the network operation team may not just be able to trust the code linked into an application library. The upgradability of a feature-rich RPC library is also limited. To upgrade an RPC library, the user application must be recompiled and rebooted. And there is no existing RPC uh, implementation targeting for lab upgrade. Then what is the current solution? The typical solution to enforce policy is to use a sidecar proxy. A sidecar is a standalone process that intercepts the network traffic sent by the application RPC library at layer four and reconstructing the application level data and applying RPC policies or enabling observability. The problem of a sidecar is that it is not efficient and let me explain why. Suppose we have a client wants to send the RPC to the server. What happens here is that the data being delivered at the transfer layer by the RPC library will be first marshaled and redirected to a sidecar process, which will first unmarshal the data, reconstructing the original request type in the memory, applying RPC policies, then remarshal the request to put the data back to the transport. And this is similar on the server side and for the reply pass. We say sidecar, as you can see here, the number of marshalling and unmarshalling steps is actually tripled for each RPC. And in our evaluation, adding a MOI sidecar to gRPC leads to 2.8 times 99% telltale latency and almost half the throughput in, term of, in terms of its bandwidth. So having a sidecar is not efficient. We do not see much hope in continuing to optimize this RPC library and sidecar approach for two reasons. First, there is only weak or no coupling between a RPC library and its sidecar. And this prevents the RPC library and sidecar from cross-layer optimization. And second, a strong coupling exists between RPC library and its application. And this makes upgrading the RPC library without stopping application difficult 
if not impossible. So the takeaway here is that to solve these limitations, we want strong coupling in a sense that we operate and forward RPC on layer seven rather than on a packet level. <laughs> and we want weak coupling in a sense that most of these RPC functionalities are extracted into a separate service. Therefore, we argue for an alternative architecture in which RPC is provided as a managed service, which is shown on the right side. In RPC as a service, we first have a mRPC library that is linked with an application. But unlike traditional RPC libraries, we decouple a set of RPC logics such as marshalling, unmarshalling, transport interface from the mRPC shim library. And the mRPC shim library connects to a mRPC system service through shared memory queue. And this MRPC, single mRPC service is persistent on the system and shared across all mRPC applications. And inside this mRPC service, we perform marshalling only after the RPC policy processing. And compared to the sidecar approach, these changes can remove the redundant marshalling steps and let us achieve manageability while having the same performance as a normal RPC library. Next, I'll let Yongji give an overview of challenges of implementing such an architecture and how we tackle these challenges. Yongji will be presenting in a very different style. It's all yours, Yongji. Thanks, Jinro, for introducing us the limitations in current RPC landscape and how's our take on the issues. So, MRPC solution is quite easy, right? We only have a couple of boxes here. However, implementing such novel architecture is not as easy as you think. There are several major challenges. Concretely, we need to face with the following three questions. How do we support new RPC functionalities for new applications at runtime? How do we enforce policies with, uh, without much overhead? And how do we live upgrade RPC implementations? In this talk, we will focus on the first of two challenges. You can find more details about the third one in our paper. First, let's talk about dynamic bending. As Jiro has mentioned, different applications have different RPC schemas. In traditional RPC libraries, you need to generate this customized marshalling and unmarshalling code and service method and load it into the user app li applications as a library along with the RPC libraries such as gRPC. However, this approach is not suitable in mRPC. We can no longer ask the user application to perform marshalling and unmarshalling because this exactly is the overhead we want to step, we want to skip this additional uh, marshalling steps if, if we want to enforce any policies. Now the question becomes, should the user generate the code, uh, the marshalling and unmarshalling code, and just pass the code to MRPC service? Of course, the answer is not. Life has never been so easy on us, right? Since the applications are untrusted, they can pass the arbitrary code, potentially malicious code, to the MRPC service. So what the user actually should pass is just the RPC schema, which is like, like the protocol to the service. And the service will invoke our schema generator to generate a marshalling module and loose to the MRPC service. The application, on the other hand, only invokes the schema compiler to generate the front-end front -end components of the original stuff, such as the method calls which just contains the code to send descriptors to MRPC service and tell it to marshal and send some requests. The takeaway here is that in MRPC, we need to decouple the marshalling and the unmarshalling components from the user stub into the MRPC service. With the dynamic binding issues addressed, it now seems quite straightforward to implement MRPC, right? Again, the answer is not true, because RPC message now resides on a shared memory heap that are now accessed by both application and the MRPC service, we find that memory management also poses a serious challenge. In this example, we can say for the key value store service, the clients want to send a GET request. So the MRPC library just put the content of the request on the shared memory heap. Then the MRPC library passes uh, something called an RPC descriptor to the MRPC service, which contains some metadata about the RPC message such as the pointer to the actual message on the shared heap. The same goes for the reply message the client received. Let's now consider when the memory for an RPC message can actually be reclaimed. 
First, the RPC mesh descriptor is sent to the MRPC service. After that, the MRPC service marshals the message and sends it throughout the NIC. After the message has been sent, the MRPC service will notify the application, and only after that, the actual me memory can be reclaimed. With how we manage our memory in MRPC in mind, let's consider the case that where we have an access control policy in play. Let's look at the exact um, flow of the message in, 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 in such a context. First, the application passes the descriptor from, to, to the MRPC front end. For example, it's a get request for some key like doc, which is the MRPC front end, then pass the, the descriptor to the policy. The policy do some inspection and then send it out throughout the NIC. However, what if the application modifies the message on the shared heap before the, after, the after the policies has inspected the, the message, but before it is sent out throughout the NIC. Then the application can basically circumvent the policy, right? So we need to tackle this problem. The solution is not, uh, not, uh, is not difficult, actually. We just need to perform a copy on write uh, implementation before, any, before we enforce any content-based policies. For example, in this case, we just need to copy the, re uh, the get request from the private, from the shared heap to the private heap before we pass a message to the access control policies. And now the RPC descriptor we handled to the policy are directly pointed to the message on the private heap. The problem is addressed. The application now cannot do anything malicious. Now, with the, uh, the aforementioned challenges addressed, let's look at the evaluation. We implement the MRPC framework in about 32,000 uh, lines of code in Rust. And in, our t in today's talk, we want to focus on these three questions. Does MRPC deliver better performance? Does MRPC enforce policies with negligible overhead? And can MRPC really improve real-world applications' performance? For the large RPC good put, we measure it on TCP, we show it on TCP transport. For RDMA transport, you can find it on, in our paper. And we keep 128 concurrent RPCs to high latency. And compared to the state-of-the-art gRPC and its uh, uh, proxy approach, our solution can speed up the throughput by 3.1 times. And the same goes for small RPC licenses. This is on RDMA transport compared with the state-of-art RPC libraries for RDMA transport, ERPC, and its proxy solution. Our message, our, our, our MRPC framework can speed up a small message latency by 1.7 times. And we also uh, evaluate how MRPC enforce per policies we mimic uh, access control policies that filter out RPCs based on string matching on one field. And we use a traffic generator that 1% of the request will not pass. And as all we can see, with gRPC, if we have a policy in play, the throughput RPC rate reduces significantly, where our approach only introduced as little as 6% overhead. And now let's look at a real-world benchmark, Deathstar Bench. This is a, a standard benchmark for microservices. And we measure, um, we, we measure the mean uh, uh, request latency over a period of time. And we can say, compared to gRPC and its proxy solution, our approach can speed up the overall end-to-end -end latency by 2.5 times. So to summarize our talk, we argue that RPC as a library cannot meet both manageability and efficiency. And we propose ARM RPC as, and we imagine, reimagine RPC as a managed system service so we can have the best of both worlds, where we can enforce the policies efficiently, where achieve live upgradability of RPC implementations. You can find uh, our code, uh, our, our source code in this QR code. Thanks for our, thanks everyone, and we're ready to take any questions.